So it's early access launch week. And while we're gearing up for the launch of campaign early access in a few days, today I want to take a little bit more time before we dive into a whole lot more official that's coming throughout this week and touch on what we're still waiting to see, but we'll see at the launch of Modern Warfare 3. We know about our standard additional maps, camos, leveling, progression, all that kind of stuff that we'll see alongside with like zombies and everything, but that's obviously stuff we didn't have in the beta. But when it comes to the fundamental features and gameplay items, what else are we still missing out on? Today, I want to run down a bit of what you can fully expect to come for launch that we still haven't seen. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below on what you're hoping to get your hands on with Modern Warfare 3, any feature you really want to see added or removed, whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoy the video, you find it add-on insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay with all things Modern Warfare 3. We've got so much up on deck here ahead of campaign early access this week, the full launch next, and so much more beyond that. So I'd love to have you in the community. We set a lofty goal of hitting 550,000 subscribers by launch. Launch. So if you guys would like to join us, I would love to have you. Finally, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market, where code Espresso can get you 10% off your entire order, but more on them a little later. For now, let's jump into these features, still coming at launch for Modern Warfare 3 that we've yet to see. First, let's touch on some gameplay-oriented stuff, things that will actually be able to help you in-game and perhaps even affect how you end up creating classes, how you end up playing the game itself. Firstly, detailed stats are going to be coming here at launch. This is something that was seen in some of the gameplay trailers and some of the screenshots that we had for Intel drops leading up to Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer reveal. Now, of course, that kind of stuff was not in the beta, but we did see it in those full images and what will be the full launch of the game. So that's a massive win, in my opinion, for players. That is, in the era of Gunsmith, something that I never understood why you have this air quote, in-depth weapon customization via weapon classes and all, but it's never really made much sense to me why we didn't end up having any sort of detailed stats because we just have to rely on inaccurate stat bars and more often than not, those are just arbitrary representations and at best vague estimations of how those weapons are being changed in those certain attributes. So having detailed statistics like we did in Cold War, like we did in Vanguard, it makes understanding your weapons so much easier. And that is a massive win. That stuff is already in the game hard coded as is. The game has to figure it out. It's just a matter of actually showing it to the players, which not coming to the defense of anybody, but I've heard over the years talking to developers that front end UI like that kind of stuff is oftentimes the biggest pain in the behind. So I'm just happy we're going to finally be able to get that big win in my opinion. Next thing that will be there at launch that's a gameplay feature is weapon tuning. Now, this is a very divisive topic. Personally, I don't see the need for weapon tuning. The differences that we saw in how much attachments were changed was minimal at best. But I do think, though, with weapon tuning and detailed statistics, that it may be something that is more beneficial than what it was last year, where a lot of it was just guesstimation. And, oh, that stat bar went out further rather than the other one, which didn't decrease as much. Maybe that's the pinpoint precise spot. But you could probably actually find that out now with the detailed stats mixed in with that. So that'll be something come launch you'll be able to play around with as well. An additional thing coming at launch in terms of maybe helping out your classes is a firing range. Now, this was previously leaked to be very similar to the last. It was something that we had the option to see the ability to go into the firing range at our COD Next build for the multiplayer reveal, but we couldn't actually go into it. So there is no first person footage here of this at the moment that I've seen, but it has been previously leaked to be very similar to the last here within Modern Warfare 2. I'm personally hoping that we see more work done to this in the future to allow for more benefit to the players, something like adding damage stats to where each shot lands on the test dummy, maybe a recoil location, something that allows you to change how the dummies perform, whether that be moving back and forth, like as if they were in motion, whatever the case, there's a bunch of stuff you could add to it. But in a positive outlook with Sledgehammer having added things in the past based on community feedback, this is something that I can see them probably doing over time, even if it's not there at launch. Launch, all things considered, we know this game was built in about half time and based upon what we had in Modern Warfare 2, I'm okay with the base firing range now with the prospect of improvements as we go along given that it's kind of an afterthought feature. As much as I really would like this, it is truly an afterthought, meaning I'm happy to see that this is progressed later on down the line if the better part of the game's fundamentals sees improvements as a developmental focus. Obviously, I don't think the firing range should take precedence over net code or movement animations and stuff like that. Obviously, that is something that you push back a little further. So fingers crossed we see some improvements, but a base firing range will be there at launch. The player health bar on the HUD is also something that should be coming at launch as well, whether that's for you and your individual operator in the lower left of your HUD or something that is visible over top of an enemy as if an enemy health bar. That's something that a card was put on the Trello board that indicates the feature in some regard is likely going to be there at launch. They stated it was investigating. The Trello board hasn't been publicly updated in a couple of days. So it is something that may be coming for launch, may still be investigated as launch happens, but it should in theory help with visibility if it is going to be applied as well to enemy players alongside that. So that'll be something that's definitely nice for visibility.
visibility. Now, mode-oriented stuff coming at launch, we're going to have, of course, hardcore mode. This is going to be there from day one, and it's not going to be a weird combination like tier one was, where you have regular damage multipliers, but the headshot multiplier is crazy high or something like that. That's a one-shot. But it's going to be great for weapon leveling, camo grinding, nearly everything being one to two shot max to end up killing. So whether or not you're going for those gold equivalent camos, platinum or polyatomic and Orion equivalent camos, or you're just trying to get through ranking up all your weapons in the fastest time possible, hardcore is going to be a great way to do that as well. Not to mention if they end up having a Rust 24-7 playlist on day one, maybe you see that be the grinder's delight at that point. There also is going to be another mode of war. This is a mode from World War II by Sledgehammer a couple of years back, so there may be a lot of players that did not play this. It's essentially a giant tug of war mode, but you don't get pushed back entirely in terms of if you're the attackers, if the defenders are pushing you back, there are checkpoints that are kind of your backstops. So I want to say there are at most three segments or checkpoints per map that you had to escort an objective through, usually a tank, and then once you reach that checkpoint, your enemies spawned further back until it was an all-out assault at the very end where enemies were spawning almost directly in front of you, trying to stop that final push. But it was a great mode in terms of just having fun with it. If I remember correctly, stats really for kills and deaths, I don't think tracked the exact same, so you could end up playing that objective and not have to worry about being blown up 20 times and being like, ah, that just destroyed my stats if you cared about that at all. Personally, I didn't too much, but I think that's how it was, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, that'll be there at launch as well. An additional larger ticket item that isn't a game mode oriented thing, that isn't a sort of gameplay oriented thing, but also is, is that your double XP tokens will be there at launch. We talked about this when we talked about things transferring from Modern Warfare 2 to Modern Warfare 3, that those double XP tokens, whether it be your operator weapon XP tokens, your weapon XP tokens, or your battle pass tokens come season one. Although the battle pass is still going to be active and tracking your progress even as you play Modern Warfare 3 in Modern Warfare 2. So you might still be able to actually use those to help you out as well if you have those on offer. But if you haven't used any of your double XP tokens, don't go use them now because they'll be way more beneficial to helping you rank up, say, again, either your operator, your weapons, whatever the case, come Modern Warfare 3. Those will be there at launch. So you can use those absolutely. And finally, the last things we'll talk about are some features for PC players that were actually debuted as of today. In today's campaign early access sort of PC dev blog, we learned about like the minimum requirements, recommended requirements, and some other stuff for when the game launches on PC, because that is a global one singular time that the game launches on PC versus it's local on consoles. So Xbox and PlayStation, it's just midnight your local time that that'll launch. But we learned about a bunch of stuff for PC, including Nvidia DLSS 3 being one of the main features here coming at launch. That being AI power boosting technology that delivers all the standard DLSS bonuses, but with the newest iteration here, DLSS 3, this year adds even more frame generation for 40 series cars to create additional frames and make it a much smoother experience without having to really sacrifice too much performance. So DLSS has been a massive help in games, I think, and it's one of the things I usually go and turn on immediately when playing on PC. So very excited to be able to experience this in Modern Warfare 3 as well, the newest iteration of that. And then finally, Nvidia Reflex, where that reduces your system latency, making gameplay smooth and more responsive, minimizing client side delay that would happen in input, making gameplay smoother and giving a better competitive edge in that regard when it comes to response time. So definitely two very big features that I'm very much so looking forward to using come launch here at this, but those were debuted as of today. But those are your features here that at launch will be there from day one. But right now we haven't been able to see or have seen previewed in either COD Next in the multiplayer review or in the beta when we had our hands on experience with it a couple of weeks ago, but they will end up being there for launch. So that is we're going to wrap the video up here. Just want to fill you guys in briefly on some of the new stuff coming that we still have quite seen. We might have a change log video coming up in the near future here talking about the changes from beta to launch, but for right now, that's where we're at. Before we wrap everything up, though, make sure you check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for 10% off your entire order of what I think are the best blue light glasses on the market. I've used their frames for going on almost three years now at this point, which is crazy to me that it's been that long, but every single pair that I've used, I've loved every single one of them. Honestly, I still have some of the originals they sent me, so they absolutely keep up in terms of quality. Now, I can't do nearly enough justice for the studies, the in-depth details they provide, that information is all linked down there in the description below. They'll absolutely be able to describe the fine details way better than I could. But again, I'll tell you this, two to three years of using their product, they're the most comfortable
comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames out of any glasses I've used. And they absolutely do help me in my daily productivity. So if you guys want to learn more, I encourage even just that, going and checking it out, learning more about what they have on offer. Link in the description below. But if you guys want to pick something up for yourself, code Espresso can get you 10% off your entire order. So again, link in the description below. For now, though, that's where we're going to wrap it up. Let me know your thoughts down below. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to here out of the sort of features coming at launch versus what we haven't seen already? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay updated with all things Modern Warfare 3 as we gear up for a very, very busy next couple of weeks here. We'll have you covered with everything you need to know. So love to have you in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Mine is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.